the National Dropout Prevention Center has been on the road, and recently the team from Solutions to the Dropout Crisis made a trip up to Guilford County Schools in North Carolina to see the Middle College High School program in action. One of the first things you notice when you go to a Middle College High School are the faces of the students. They have a glow that you don't always see in a traditional high school, and they all have that look of optimism and hope for their future. And when the Solutions team visited three of the six Middle College high schools in Guilford County, we found expressions of excitement and contentment on the faces of the teachers, counselors, and administrators. Join us now in learning more about the concept of Middle College high schools and how your district can get started on such a promising solution to the dropout crisis. What is a Middle College high school? Middle College high schools are alternative schools housed on college campuses and limit enrollment to approximately 140 students. They have a small and devoted staff, alternative schedules, and different contexts that serve different students. On our site visit, we found the central components of a middle college high school to be disengaged students with academic potential. The students have academic potential but have become disengaged from school. Small size of school and classes. Both the size of the classes and the school are kept small. Location on a college campus. The program is both housed and part of a college campus. Dedicated principals and teachers. All faculty and staff must be selected carefully and want to be there. The Middle College High Schools of Guilford County. In Guilford County, there are six Middle College High Schools. The Middle College at Guilford Technical Community College in Jamestown, Greensboro Middle College, the Middle College at North Carolina A&T, the Middle College at Bennett College for Women, the Middle College at Guilford Technical Community College in Greensboro, the Middle College of Entertainment and Technology at GTCC High Point. We visited the all-male middle college of North Carolina A&T, the all-female middle college at Bennett, and the middle college at Guilford Technical Community College's Jamestown campus. Who are the students at the middle college high schools? Let's meet some of these students and hear why they are attracted to middle college high schools. Well, my 10th grade school year, I had gotten in some, in some conflicts over at Smith High School. I was skipping classes and actually not keeping up with my grades. So I had a friend that went to Delhi High School, and he came here in his 11th grade year, and he was doing well. So he told me about the program over here at NC Middle College. So me and my mother looked into it, and Mr. Pratt, Mr. Pratt was here and he accepted me within my 10th grade year. By my 11th grade year, I was focused and ready for school. I did well within my 11th grade year. Um, my GPA came back up a little bit, and by my 12th grade year, everything was, I'm on a successful track. I don't dread coming here. I, I used to dread school, and then I dreaded going like when they said I was going to Andrews, I dreaded that. And here I'm like getting up early and coming to school and paying attention. I didn't do that last year. I just didn't do anything. Throughout elementary school and middle school, I've always liked school, but I just, I never could. I didn't, I, I needed more attention than the average student. And um, throughout school, I didn't do so good behaviorally, but academically I was fine. I was good. I was, I'm a smart, intelligent student. But um, coming to the middle college, it, just, it gave me more attention. It helped me to focus myself, having more attention and have people that actually cared and not have 300 students to deal with and 
you know, it gave you more attention. It felt more like someone actually cared other than, oh okay, yeah, my teacher likes me, you know, but it was like, oh, my teacher really cares about me. She wants to know, he or she wants to know what's going on with me. They didn't care. They, I felt like the teachers didn't care about me and, you know, the students, um, I was hanging around, you know, the wrong people, you know, skipping school. I was just, you know, influenced by, you know, just wrong, the wrong things. And I noticed that and I wanted to correct myself and have a better life for myself. The school district knows that these schools are not for everyone, so they look for certain criteria. Uh, first of all, I think we look for students where there is some evidence of disengagement. Uh, what we mean by that is that we have other evidence from prior school and from what we see the, uh, the kids are capable of and how they're typically doing. Uh, so you look at issues like attendance, you look at issues like low or failing grades. That's one, one set of kids. Uh, another set of kids you can look at, um, I would say, more from academic difficulty. Uh, it's, not, it's not that they are ready to do college work, in fact, far from it. But you've got to have some reason to believe that they're capable of doing that work. So you, you're, you're reaching out to rescue those kids, uh, realizing that if they don't get the intensive support, uh, they're not going to be successful. I think another need that, that these middle colleges are telling us is a hunger for community. You know, a lot of us as adults can think back perhaps to the high schools we went to uh, and although those days were not perfect and we lost a lot of kids, in fact even more then than we do now, um, there was a sense that the high school served a defined community. I mean there were churches, there were uh, small towns, there were even within cities, neighborhoods, there was a feeling that, you know, hey, we're together here. I don't think we've got that same sense with the changes that have happened in society. And I think the kids are telling us that they're hungry for that sense of community. Uh, sometimes when I've talked to students at middle colleges, they say, at a middle college, you cannot hide. You can't fade into the woodwork and, and not be noticed. If you don't show up in class, it's not just teachers but classmates that are calling you or trying to find out, hey, where were you? Uh, everybody, as one student put it, everybody knows your business. Uh, and so that kind of very close, caring community uh, makes it more difficult for a student simply to stop trying or stop showing up when they encounter problems either academically or socially. What is special about middle college high schools? Small size. In middle college high schools, the ratio of faculty to students does not exceed 10 to 15 students per class, thus enabling teachers to provide more time for interaction with each student and individualization of classroom instruction. We cannot be, have a relationship with 30 kids at once, but I can have one with 10 or 11, and that makes all the difference in the world. Because a lot of the kids, we think it should take so long to get something done or whatever, but that's not true. You know, It might take it twice as long as I'm thinking it's going to take, so I have to be able to have time to come back around. When I taught middle school for 35 minutes and I had 30 kids, it was a minute and 12 seconds or whatever per child that I could spend with each kid, really. Whereas here I have 90 minutes, I have 10 kids, you know, even on a bad day it's 9 or 10 minutes per kid, which is a huge increase. We want to give them um, success stories that they can relate to and think on. And we do that with a small learning environment. We do that with small classes. Um, our classes probably um, average about 15. We um, want to instill in them the knowledge that they can succeed and therefore build their self-esteem. Um, it's just a great environment for any any person that has messed up in school um, and they want to do better and the people think that they don't have another chance in finishing school because that's what I thought. Um, just try your best and reach for the stars and you'll make it. Well I found Bennett would be easier because the class size is smaller and I feel like I could ask questions without people looking around and being rude, and I'm kind of shy like in front of a lot of people. Um, we have the ability to, to interact with students differently because of size. 
um, we can know our students differently because of size. And we can plan with them. We can do career planning uh, because we, are, we have the luxury of working, of knowing our students well. If you know somebody well, you, you help them plan, do career planning in a much different way than if they're one of uh, 400 students that you have to uh, write college recommendations for. We're able to meet the needs of students who may be lost in a traditional setting. We tend to be closer knit in terms of both students and teachers. We tend to be able to kind of decide, you know, uh, maybe I need to keep this child in my room because this child is, is having problems at home and, and address some of those needs outside of the classroom as well as academic needs. I think I, we address the academic needs of students who are struggling as well as students who are much more advanced because if you have like 10 kids in a class, you're able to diversify your lesson plans. You're able to um, interact on a one-on-one -on -one basis with, the uh, with students. I think that this is the uh, future of public education, to be perfectly honest. This is the future. Strong personal relationships. All staff are able to pick up on problems that may be arising for students whether in their academic, social, or personal lives. Students feel that someone really cares. But I, I've come to realize that really the only difference between at-risk sixth graders and at-risk 16-year-olds is their height. <laughs> um, and in fact, I really believe that at-risk 16-year-olds need <clears throat> that caring adult in their life even more because the regular traditional high school provides no safety net whatsoever for them and so if they don't have the support at home, if a child doesn't have the support at home to help um, foster that structure, then they really need caring adults in their life. It's all about the relationship piece and so we try to incorporate all of that together. So you build in their relationship, you build in their social skills and you're watching them grow as individuals. And some of them that come here that's under our middle college umbrella, they hadn't even thought about going to college. And then with here, because I talked to them in the ninth grade, and even when they come in, the first thing I ask them is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Okay, what is your career aspiration? And then sometimes they'll say, well, I don't know. No one ever asked me that. And I said, well, what are some of the things you like to do? So I like to learn of them. That's the most important thing, is learning of them. First thing that I noticed was the class size. Um, next were the teachers. Everything was 10 times more personal than it was in my traditional setting. Um, there was no room for you to fail and no room for you to not make it, whereas um, in a larger high school, you could have just been lost with a bunch of other numbers. And so um, that was one of the biggest changes. It seemed as if people cared and were concerned.